Today we're going to finish up with the new Techware boards, which I've really enjoyed for the budget end. I thought the Spectre Pro was and is one of the best looking budget mechs, and the Phantom L was something different with the Altemu low profile switches, and again they've gone with something a bit different here with the Phantom 96. And I'll say it now, this is primarily available for the Southeast Asian market at the time of this video, and that doesn't include the Philippines, so availability isn't great, so to make up for it a little bit, I'll give it away at the end of the video. First impressions, it's a relatively light keyboard for its size, coming in at about 750 grams, and it does have a touch more flex than usual, but this is me going pretty hard at it, it's really fine. And as you may have presumed, this has 96 keys, but in a form factor that's only a column longer than a standard 10 keyless board. And they've done this by basically combining the right side keys together, which includes the nav keys, arrow keys, and the numpad. We've seen other boards do this, probably the most well-known one is the old Cooler Master Pro M. I'm a true believer in trying to reduce the lateral length of a keyboard as it allows more space for your mouse and it brings it closer to your body for a more natural and ergonomic experience. And it's always nice to have more space on your desk for whatever. So how this works is that there's two modes which are activated by this dedicated key here. Uh, which for some reason is a tiny bit shorter than the other keys, which bothers me. So we have just the normal numpad, only difference is that the zero key is split into two, and then you press it again and you have the normal nav and arrow keys. I don't use the numpad often and I love dedicated arrow keys, so I left it like so. And just a tiny inconvenience for me, when you turn your PC back on, it resets to the numpad mode. For me, I like having the option to switch, essentially being a 10 keyless board with an optional numpad. Obviously the main drawback is you can't use the numpad and arrow keys simultaneously, and that can be a problem for people, it really depends on you, and that's pretty much the main draw point of this keyboard, this layout. Here's a typical 96% keyboard which is nearly the same size, just slightly smaller, and it solves the issue by squeezing in the arrow keys here. Even though it's not my favourite layout, as I do like gaps between clusters of keys, maybe it is a more logical approach to this sort of layout, although if you can afford it, I highly highly recommend the Leopold FC980M, which is like a combination of these two boards, but in my opinion is the best in terms of usability and aesthetics, and also quality. We can do some customising in the software that we can download from the website, and it's exactly the same as the Phantom L, so here's some mad copy paste. So we have three customizable profiles and it's super self-explanatory. We can select a key and change it to whatever. And that includes macros. So in this section we can create macros with delays and such and you can go back and assign them to a key. Unfortunately I couldn't find a way to change profiles on the board itself. You have to change it via the software so you can't really access the other functions you assign to another profile especially since you won't be changing too many keys on your default because you actually need to use them as intended. Then we have the lighting section, again self-explanatory. And finally the gaming mode section where you can disable some keys that may put you in a spot of bother. Overall, just a nice simple piece of software that works. I still would like to be able to switch profiles on board to quickly access other functions because they are profiles instead of layers. Alrighty, back to the keyboard. As said, this is a relatively light keyboard for its size, as it has a 1.5mm aluminium plate, and that's it for the top. So it has a floating key design with the switches exposed from the sides. It's something you may or may not like, that's up to you. And yeah, it's just super basic as you can see, with minor folds at the front and back. And the bottom piece is of course plastic and has a bit more going on. We have our rubber feet as well as two flip up feet that are also nicely rubber tipped. There looks to be holes for water to pass through, not going to test that but they're there. Then there's our plastic ring keycap puller with inbuilt storage which is pretty neat and handy. And finally this extra bottom row keycap which you have to pull out with a keycap puller is, well, it's there. Supposedly, they may change the design of the metal plate in the future, so there's that. 
Personally, I think that it's not the most refined design at the moment, and they can definitely do better, especially after seeing how beautiful their Spectre Pro was. The keycaps are made from about 1.1mm thick ABS plastic and are double shot, so the legend is another piece of plastic and won't fade away. They look alright actually, for backlit caps anyway. It does have a standard ANSI layout, so the keycaps are easily replaceable as well. As with many budget mechs, this has our Temu switches. Uh, the ones I have here are our Temu Reds, which are a light linear switch, meaning that it has no bump or click, and it is also available in blues and browns. And as usual, these are hot swappable, meaning that we can pull out the key switches without desoldering. However, these are super tight as always, and I've never liked the key switch pullers that come with these boards, and yeah, you can see for yourself. Because they're so tight, pretty much their compatibility is just with our Temu switches. So that means Cherry MX, Gatoron, Kale, Jurok, whatever key switch, are not fully compatible. Basically the pins just don't fit properly. Apparently you can file down the pins, but I've never bothered. And you can make them work if there is enough contact, even though the pins probably will be bent. But really, just for simplicity, it's just our Temu that will fit properly. With all that being said though, it's better than not having hot swap at all, so it's still easy to replace your key switch for whatever reason, but with our Temu only. Anyway, here's how it sounds. The typing experience is actually pretty good. The bottom out surprisingly feels quite nice and solid, being quite full and not hollow feeling at all. The sound also has that sort of solid-ish feel, but unfortunately like their Spectre Pro, it is quite pingy. You probably need to wear headphones to hear the metallic ping. Uh, definitely in real life it's very noticeable, especially without clicky switches to cover that sound, but if you have stuff coming out of your speakers anyway, uh, I think you'll be fine. Also, the stabilizers for the longer keys aren't great, and they do have some rattle. To open up the board, there's a couple of Phillips head screws under some caps. And we have some foam in here. Pretty thin and very airy, so I don't think it makes much of a difference in regards to feel and sound in particular, as we do get a lot of ping. The bottom plastic shell is super simple as well, with no real reinforcement and such on the bottom surface. I should also add that this was quite an early unit, and I've had this for a while, so I don't know if the PCB is the same now, but as we can see, we have our Aotemu hot swap socket soldered in, and yeah, not much else to say. And that's the Techware Phantom 96. So this comes in at a recommended retail price of 59 USD, so definitely towards the budget end, and again just something different, with the main feature being this kind of hybrid layout. I definitely believe in compact form factors, and it is a space saving solution for people who want an numpad. For me personally, I usually kept it with the arrow keys out, but yeah, the main use case issue would be that you can't use the two modes simultaneously of course, and that's up to the user whether that's fine. Alright, like I said at the start, this has pretty limited availability, uh, being primarily in Southeast Asia for now, 
So I'll give this away. Um, let's do Instagram for this one. Sorry for those who don't have it. Uh, don't worry, I'll have other giveaways very soon. I'll chuck up a post on Insta about this keyboard and just follow whatever I chuck in the description. Mm -hmm.